Hi, I'm Dale Holiday coming to you from Corvallis, Oregon in the bountiful Willamette Valley. Welcome to my show, Valley Views, a forum for sharing relevant topics relating to people and issues in the Willamette region. Hi folks, we're here today with Clarice Amorim Freitos, who is the coordinator for the Lynn Benton Health Equity Alliance here in Corvallis. And I'd like to talk with Clarice today about her work in this regional health coalition. Thanks for joining us, Clarice. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, can you tell us a little bit about what is the Lynn Benton Health Equity Alliance? What do they do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so the Lynn Benton Health Equity Alliance is one of five regional health equity coalitions in Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, the regional health equity coalitions were a program that was started about six years ago at the state level. And we actually, our coalition actually existed before then. So our coalition started in 2008. There was a group of concerned citizens and just people interested in health equity issues, which at that point, 10 years ago, was a new topic that we were still sort of learning to talk about. Um, right. Health equity and social determinants of health weren't commonplace things to be discussed. So there were a couple community showings of a documentary called Unnatural Causes. And then after those showings and that discussion, a sort of natural group emerged that was composed of social service agencies, um, grassroots organizations, healthcare providers. Mm -hmm. And we started organizing to do policy and systems change in our area. We got a very small grant originally, and the coalition used to be housed at Benton County Health Department at that point in time. And then at the same time, the state got interested in what we were doing and started their own program to fund different regional health equity coalitions. So six years ago, we got funding from the state and we moved from Benton County Health Department to Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services. And there were a few reasons for that move, but it sort of made sense because being you know, housed in a nonprofit allows us to be a lot more vocal and do more advocacy in ways that a county organization. What brought you to this position? I have an interesting story. Okay. Um, so I actually, I'm not from the US. I was born and raised in Brazil, and I moved to the US when I was 19 to Kansas. <laughs> To Kansas. To okay. go to college, and I thought mm -hmm. I was going to be a journalist. Uh -huh. And one year into journalism school, I found out that I hated it and ended up um, graduating with a degree in anthropology and Latin American studies, and then stayed on and got a master's in cultural anthropology in Kansas. And while I was doing research for my master's, I came across public health, and I got really interested. It gave us this really dynamic, multidisciplinary field, and I decided I wanted to learn more about it. Yeah. So that's what brought me to Oregon. I actually came to OSU to pursue a PhD in mm -hmm. health promotion and health behavior. Several years into that program, I ended up actually deciding that I didn't want to do a PhD anymore. Um, I just figured out that a, a career in academ academia wasn't really what I was striving for anymore. Yes. And I, I found that I really, really wanted to work in public health, but you know, at the community level. Right. <laughs> so I ended up just finishing my program with a master's instead of a PhD. And that's when I heard about the position at the Lean Benton Health Equity Alliance. That was about a year and a half ago. And it seemed to be everything that I would like to do because mm -hmm. it involved, you know, working with communities and trying to change policy. And it had a component of public health, but it also had a component of health education. And uh -huh. I could use a little bit of my anthropology background in it. Um, and that's kind of how I ended up in this position. If you wouldn't mind talking about some of the projects you're involved with there. So currently we get money from four different places. Uh -huh. So we have funding from the Oregon Health Authority Office of Equity and Inclusion. That's the oh, right. biggest chunk of money that we get mm -hmm. from the state. Excellent. Um, and that grant is to promote um, capacity building for our coalition, to mm -hmm. strengthen our coalition and strengthen cross-sector partnerships in our area, so partnerships yes. between healthcare and housing and transportation and culturally specific organizations mm -hmm. and like a really diverse group of, uh, of coalition members. Yes. And then we're also supposed to work toward policy systems and environmental change. Rather than working, providing services to populations in need, mm -hmm. 
What we do is we advocate stakeholders on city government, county government, state government, right. school boards, the CCO, and we advocate for um, specific policy changes that would improve health equity in our region. Or we advocate for changes in, in the system, in the way how how our institutions are designed. Right. So it, it's a really upstream type of work. Yeah. And we have several organizations that, so every year we have um, a grant program that we open up and we have several organizations that receive policy and system change grants from us and mm -hmm. they're doing that work as well. Nice. And each of them proposes a project and they know exactly um, what policy they're gonna promote and who they're gonna target and how they're gonna do it. As a coalition, we do it, but we also give money out to our community partners to do the work as well. We also receive money from the Public Health Division of the Oregon Health Authority, so specifically the Health Promotion and Chronic Disease Prevention Section, or HIPCADIP. So health Promotion and Chronic Disease <laughs> Prevention Section. So they give us money to work toward policies on their interest areas, which are healthy eating, active living, tobacco prevention, alcohol mm -hmm. prevention, mm -hmm. and drug prevention. So we work really closely with our public health tobacco prevention specialists and, and alcohol and drug prevention specialists. We were really involved the last year with the tobacco retail license in Corvallis and updating it mm -hmm. so it would be more reflective of the current situation in Corvallis. Okay, good. Um, and I don't know if you know anything about what happened there, but no, what happened there? <laughs> Fill us in. <laughs> so uh, Corvallis and Benton County are some of the few jurisdictions in Oregon that actually have a tobacco retail license. So in order to be able to sell tobacco mm -hmm. in Corvallis and Benton County, you need to be licensed by the county. So not anyone can sell tobacco in our region. And we were one of the earliest jurisdictions to put that in place, mm -hmm. which was, in, I want to say, in the late 90s. Okay. But back then, e-cigarettes and vaping, vaping wasn't really a thing that people did. And the original policy had nothing about, had no limitations on where people could open tobacco establishments. Mm -hmm. So over time, we noticed that, well, vaping and e-cigarettes weren't really being covered by that address. license. Right. Um, so technically anyone could sell those. We noticed that most tobacco retail establishments were concentrated in low-income neighborhoods, yes. in neighborhoods that have a lot of people of color and immigrants. Mm -hmm. Like in Corvallis specifically, there's a corridor on 9th Street and a corridor on Southtown and then around the, the campus. Yes, yes. Sometimes close to schools uh -huh. as well. So we wanted to change the license to include the e-cigarettes and the vaping products under its umbrella. And then to also make sure that no new retail establishments could sell tobacco within a thousand feet of an existing establishment or within a thousand feet of a school. Mm -hmm. So we were involved with uh, the efforts for advocating for that change to Excellent. go through. And so the, are the e-cigarettes and the vaping, is, are they now covered yeah. under the license? Yeah, thing? both of the things were approved Excellent. by the city of Corvallis mm -hmm. last year and should be in place now. And, yeah. and we did work with a lot of community partners for that. So we had the Benton County epidemiologists come and show exactly where the establishments were located and how that correlated with demographics. Yes. We had community members come and talk about how they felt their kids were being targeted by oh, advertising. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because it is a concerted effort, you know, I mean, that's been shown. And I, yeah. So there's that. That's mm -hmm. one of the one of the four avenues for funding. Um, mm -hmm. We also received some money from our local CCO, Coordinated Care Organization, and we're using that money to do health equity summits and trainings mm -hmm. and some technical assistance in our area. So yeah, so we want it to be this year long and hopefully more than a year conversation with healthcare providers and social service agencies and community members about what is health equity, why does it matter, right. what are some of the health equity issues in our area, mm -hmm. what kinds of trainings they need, and then bring those trainings to Lean, Benton, and also Lincoln County. Oh, nice, yeah, that yeah. district, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is our coordinated care organization covers those three counties, mm -hmm. so we are we're going to try to promote those programs in those three counties. Um, so that's really exciting. Yes. And then the last project that we have going is funded through the Meyer Memorial Foundation. Oh, yes. And it's a housing advocacy project. And we're trying to recruit and train community members to become housing advocates. 
Oh. And we're focusing on recruiting um, people of color and low-income people in uh-huh. Corvallis. We're starting in Corvallis, and ideally in the future we would like to expand it to other places too. But what would a housing advocate be? So we want to train people on how to talk about housing. So how to effectively talk to a policymaker about why home matters and the importance of supporting affordable housing policies okay. um, in our community. Yes. Um, and then we know that in Corvallis, there are several policies that are going to be voted on over the next couple of years mm-hmm. that have the potential to improve um, housing access and housing affordability. Oh, good. And we've noticed that a lot of times um, there are advocates for housing. Um, yes housing affordability and housing access, Mm -hmm. but they tend to be the same people and they tend to come from the same demographic, Ah, which is, you know, the same service providers, the same Mm nonprofits that have been over and over and over. Right. And we want to train a more diverse set of community members to come and and help um, show city council and show other stakeholders why these things matter, uh-huh. basically. Oh, very good. Very so we good. have a lot of things going on. Lots going on. Okay, and I can already tell we've pretty much reached the end of our time here, and so I'd like to invite you to do a second part of this mm-hmm. interview, Clarice, and we can continue talking about your work because it's fascinating. It is so so dense, it is so chock full what you're doing, and it all sounds fascinating and good stuff. So Yeah, it's all exciting stuff, and it's all um, things that our community members can take advantage of. Yes. Like, our, our meetings are as open as possible. Mm-hmm. We offer interpretation from English to Spanish, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. We try to offer food, we try to have it in accessible places. Um, our trainings are free and open to the public, so Excellent. really anyone that's interested in learning more about these things or getting involved can, okay. can join us. Is there a website that people could access to find out when meetings are happening and whatnot? So, um, we have information on the Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services website, which okay. is www.w nhs yes. dot org yes since we are housed on Willamette neighborhood housing services mm-hmm. we also have a facebook page that you can find just by typing lean bent on health equity alliance Beautiful. i believe the address is facebook.com backslash um lean bent on hea excellent we do announce pretty much everything on facebook and we also have a mailing list that people can sign up for okay and the easiest way to get on the mailing list is to send me a message at lean benton hea at gmail.com okay mm-hmm. sounds good all right well thank you very much clarice i will have you back for um, part two to yeah. talk a bit more about your work <laughs> thank you thank you for coming <laughs> You've been listening to Valley Views. I'm your host, Dale Holliday, and I'd love to hear from you. Comments, questions, ideas for future topics, or other matters you would like explored. Email me at valleyviews at kboo.org. That's V-A-L-L-E-Y-V-I-E-W-S at kboo.org. Special thanks to Chad Howard from Corvallis Access Media for his technical assistance and support. I look forward to being with you again next time. And remember, as Doctor Who once said, I'm not in charge, but I'm full of ideas. Bye.